In this video, I'm going to quickly go over three things that you should know before using ketoconazole. So let's jump right into it. Number one, when patients use topical ketoconazole, they may experience a burning sensation on their skin. So if a patient is to experience this side effect, it typically only occurs in the area where the cream was applied. It doesn't usually spread to other areas. This side effect is characterized by an itching sensation, a burning sensation, or redness of the skin. The general recommendation for patients who experience this side effect is the next time they apply the cream, try to use less cream in the affected area to see if the effect will decrease. On a positive note, this side effect is typically mild and does not last a long time. If this is something you're experiencing, it's important to try your best to only apply the cream to the area that needs it. Be as precise as you can. When you apply the cream, it can also be helpful to apply the cream as gently as possible. Another helpful tip is to wear loose fitted clothing over the affected area where you applied the cream as this may decrease sweating and decrease the effect that you're experiencing. If the burning or redness does not go away after a few days or it gets worse at any time, it may be advisable to stop using the cream and seek medical attention from either your pharmacist or your prescriber. Number two, when you use oral ketoconazole, you have to keep an eye out for nausea and vomiting. Nausea and vomiting are side effects that come up with a lot of different medications. Although I typically like to give a percentage for the side effects that I cite in these videos, with ketoconazole for nausea and vomiting, all I can say is that they're listed as common. But this isn't the reason that I thought it was important to mention these side effects. With ketoconazole in particular, these side effects, nausea and vomiting, can sometimes be an indicator of something more serious going on. Ketoconazole has rarely caused serious liver problems. So if you're experiencing signs and symptoms of liver problems, such as nausea and vomiting that does not go away, you should seek medical attention right away. Other signs and symptoms to watch out for would be stomach or abdominal pain, dark urine, or yellowing of the eyes or skin. Loss of appetite and light colored stools can also be indicators of liver issues. And number three, when you use ketoconazole long term, you may be at a risk of experiencing what's called QT interval prolongation. A prolonged QT interval is a serious side effect of ketoconazole. This side effect indicates a reading on an electrocardiogram or ECG that indicates potential ventricular arrhythmias that could lead to things like syncope or fainting. In some cases, it could lead to cardiac arrest or a misdiagnosis as a seizure disorder. A ventricular arrhythmia is typically a problem with the heart's electrical system, causing it to sometimes beat too fast or even chaotically. Luckily, this can be monitored and prescribers and pharmacists can take appropriate steps or actions to ensure that this side effect does not occur. The standard of practice would be to give the least amount of medications possible to a patient that can cause QT prolongation. So we just want to give a couple of those medications that have that side effect in their profile. With fewer medications on board that can cause this side effect, the risk of experiencing it is minimized. And that's all we're going to talk about today with ketoconazole. But before you take off, I wanted to let you know you can pick up a copy of my book, The Fifth Episode, Inside the Manic Mind, which details my experience with bipolar disorder. And the link is in the description below. Take care.